Hello, everyone. I just got back from SCG Denver. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I started 4-0 with a deck pretty similar to this, and then the wheels just kind of fell off. I don't know. I lost a rally, uh, won a round, and then I just lost a bunch in a row. And, uh, you know, it was good. I went to the tournament to try and practice for the Invitational. Flights were pretty cheap, so that's always nice. Got to stay with some friends of mine that I don't get to see very often, so that was also great. And I learned a bunch of stuff. So, ultimately, uh, I think the thing was a success. And what is this puppy doing? Where are you, where are you going? Where are you going? Stay up there. Alright. So, uh, I'm not sure how I turned into Mario Guy, but here we are. Uh, just Nomad Outpost in <laughs> every standard tournament ever, I guess. Uh, this deck was built on the premise that Soulfire Grandmaster and Painful Truths is basically the best thing you can be doing in standard. And I mostly believe that to be true. There are certainly some exceptions, uh, matchups where that combination of cards is not all that effective. So, uh, Tarka Red is a pretty good one where Painful Truths may be a little on the slow end. Uh, they don't have a lot of burn spells, so if you're able to just remove their creatures... Uh, drawing three, even at the cost of three life, is fine because you're you're rarely under uh, the threat of getting burned out because they just have some wild slashes and Atarkas commands for burn spells and you know not like the firecrafts and stoke the flames and stuff like that. So uh, also, if you have Soulfire Grandmaster active, it probably doesn't matter because you'll be like roasting stuff, fire impulsing stuff, gaining some life, and the painful truths just gets offset from that. Uh, also, this deck is splashing for Siege Rhino because we just end up with 14 free green sources anyway because we're playing 12 fetches. And, uh, for example, you want Windswept Heath to be able to get red mana, so you have a Cinder Glade. And then you want Wooded Foothills to be able to get white mana, so you have a Canopy Vista. And you, yeah, you just end up with 14 green. So, uh, Siege Rhino's pretty free. My deck from the open had some Dem Protectors. Those are a little on the slow end. Uh, I also had a forest because I had more green cards, and the forest messed me up a bunch of times with, like, Crackling Doom and stuff. Uh, so, also so far Grandmaster, you know? Like, the the deck, this isn't Jess Guy, where, like, you have a bunch of blue and red sources to key off Grandmaster. Uh, so you, you basically just have red. And I had 19 red in my deck, I think, and I felt like I could have used another one, per perhaps. Uh, this, this deck... Uh, this version of the deck swapped an outpost for a shambling vent and cut the forest for a mountain. So uh, I'm breaking even on red sources and I feel like maybe the deck should have another one and maybe I should go back to three nomad outposts. But uh, forest, swamp, don't really combo too well with Soulfire Grandmaster, especially when you get to those later stages where you're trying to activate it twice in one turn. And that actually does happen, but... Uh, a lot of the times when you're doing that, it's because you have Fire Impulse, which requires additional red mana, so uh, you kind of end up being taxed on red in the super, super late game, so uh, Forest did not really help there. I did have some Abzan Charms, that was the other green card I had in my deck, and I didn't have the full, full amount of Painful Truths, which I think was a mistake, because Truths was just better than Abzan Charm, it was not particularly close, Abzan Charm was very hard to cast, it taxed my mana, like I said, because of the Forest... Uh, I basically needed to get the Force early to be able to play stuff like Abzan Charm, and that kind of messed me up. So uh, we are just playing the full amount of Painful Truths, which I think was a big mistake for uh, what I did in Denver, where, you know, I just, I, I also had too many three drops, but yeah, I, I didn't, the games I drew Painful Truths were not very close, I'll just put it that way. And Abzan Charm, like, kind of got you there, uh, but, you know, ultimately you just end up like a card short, which is not great, so... Uh, cutting Abzan Charm, cutting Den Protector, that makes it so I don't have this glut at 3 mana, which I used to, which is nice, so I definitely like that. In their spot, I have Seeker of the Way, and it's another 2-drop, which I definitely wanted. Uh, I only have 15 white sources, so I could see maybe adding another Plains at the cost of maybe the second Swamp. And maybe I should do that before I join this league, I don't know. Eh, no, we'll, we'll just leave it as is. But I think, yeah, maybe I should play a Plains instead of a Swamp. Just so I have more natural ways to play a white grizzly bear on turn two. And I considered a ration clerk instead of seeker, which might seem super weird. And, you know, it is. But uh, a ration clerk main deck would allow me to save on sideboard slots against the Tarka Red. And it also just gives you the three life for sure for Painful Truths, which is nice. And it's not even the worst thing, because if you play against something like Esper Dragons or whatever, that thing will soak up, like, a Foul Tongue Invocation. It gives you, like, another body to attack Planeswalkers, and, 
doesn't seem like the worst thing. It is certainly underpowered, so I went with Seeker of the Way. I'm not sure how these are going to perform, but we'll find out. And, yeah, this deck is basically just built to maximize Grandmaster and Painful Truths. So we have four of each. Uh, I tried to play as many life gain cards as I could without just playing something like a Ration Cleric that, you know, all it does really is gain you life. Uh, but we have, like, the commands to return the Soulfire Grandmaster. Also combos with it pretty well. You can potentially lock out their draw step, which is pretty sick. And there's a lot of fetching and a lot of velocity in this deck, so you're going to end up with a lot of cards in your graveyard. And then, with Soulfire Grandmaster, the best card is probably Murderous Cut. And that's that's kind of what sold me on this package, is Grandmaster and Truths together are great, but once you add Murderous Cut into the equation, then it just becomes phenomenal. And uh, I like this deck, I will probably run it back at the Invitational, but eh, we'll see. Uh, so that's about it. I have some dresses. I think dress is just a good card in the format. I have an Utter End to answer things like Planeswalkers. Uh, another another copy of Utter End in the sideboard. Uh, my Atarka Red Package is three Radiant Flames, three Irration Clerics. And I have the Dark Petition to go get Virulent Plague. Uh, Hollowed Moonlight is also serviceable against them, depending on how many token makers they have. Uh, you generally don't have the luxury of holding open mana, so this is a card that I might just have on the play, but not on the draw. If that makes any sense. And then have some infinite obliterations, also combos with the Dark Petition. So the Dark Petition is basically like an extra copy of Obliteration and Virulent Plague. And it just saves you a sideboard slot, which I like. Uh, plus, if you end up not needing an Obliteration or a Virulent Plague, say you're playing in something like Esper Dragons, maybe you obliterated them once... Or maybe, you know, they had a window to cast Ojutai and did not, so you don't think they have it. Maybe you want to go get a threat with Dark Petition instead. Uh, so, you know, a little bit of utility, which is nice. And then the Moonlights and the Obliterations are for Rally. I lost a Rally in round 5 of the tournament. Uh, I'm pretty sure I messed up game 2 uh, in a couple different spots. And maybe I could have won that game, but uh, that is a matchup that I was not well practiced in. So I was playing a little slow and... We went pretty close to time. I think we had 10 minutes left at the end of game two, and I got two owed. So I don't even know if I would have had time to win game three, but uh, that's what we practice for. You know, I, I think going into the Invitational, I'm going to be well more prepared for that sort of matchup, and I'll be able to play at a quicker pace, hopefully finish three games in 50 minutes. And uh, now I think I actually know what my game plan should be against them, which involves an extra infinite obliteration uh, instead of trying to just max out on Moonlights. So, we'll see if that works, and then we have the third and fourth copies of Duress. Again, good card in the format, good against Control, good against Jeskai, good against Atarka Red. So, oh, uh, that's about it. Basically, got ourselves a little mid-range grindy deck, and we're going to play a league, uh, maybe four rounds of a league, and see how it does. So, let's get to it. <laughs> 